years of that. Two 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 years of that. He will. Uh, we're relieved. Uh, he, he, he said that uh, uh, first he expressed considerable uh, understanding and appreciation for the pressures, unfair pressures on you from, uh, from, from many sources in terms of doing things that you felt were not, you were not ready to do. And he said that uh, uh, Kennedy felt this same kind of pressure, that only the president could be the judge of when was the best time in his, in his scheme of things to decide. And he, he said, secondly, that uh, he had uh, not seen any uh, difficulty in, in, in decision-making on your part recently, that he found uh, uh, you uh, completely receptive to uh, uh, advice that he considered important and, and, and not uh, strained in any way. Thirdly, he knew that uh, he had, uh, uh, I think he used the word actually, gone against the president's uh, instructions or, or wishes on, on these speeches. Uh, but he, he reiterated to me his, what he said was my honest understanding of the president's desire, stated three or four months ago, to make some speeches in the right way, and that he was uh, uh, also felt that it was good to take some of the pressure some of the uh, criticism from the liberal community, academic community away from the president and attach it to him and Dean Rusk and others. And uh, the, the upshot of it was, as best I could tell, Bundy was trying to say to me, look, uh, if, if the president has any uh, idea that uh, uh, anything's wrong with me, I hope he will not entertain them very long because there's not. He's saying I'm very happy at my job. So well, then he went on a discussion of he did not think the White House and the President were being well served by the Department of State. He didn't mention any names, but he just said that the system over there is a... Well, he just repeated what you hear anywhere about the State Department. And, uh, it was a very pleasant but candid uh, uh, hour's lunch, in which I thought he was, he was trying to be open and uh, direct. Well... You see, they would naturally talk to Bundy and to Larry and to uh, Dick and to Lee White. That's where they would start. Then they'd take on the independent fringe people, I think, they'd consider, like Cater, uh, maybe Harry. They're kind of liberal and on the fringe and not known as tied too closely and then move in. I would imagine, though, that this started with Bundy uh, because he's had to be set down a time or two. I don't, were you in there the other day when he, uh, I'm sure you weren't, he insisted on bringing up the Javits resolution. And I said, now we'll uh, think about that. Well, he said, we've got to decide to bring it up. And I just had to finally just to really flourish and say, uh, put that aside now. I told you two or three times, quit that, let's go on to the agenda. No, it was not uh, it was real, it was rather rough. And I think we have a video of that. And, uh, well, I've got to go see the okay. key thing, but it's what you've got to do is two things now with your press. Go out there and relieve your tensions after talking to me and let them talk to you some so you can see it. And. Uh, I think if I were you, I would take the line that we have uh, had a good many differences within the administration debate back and forth that I have to resolve on everything from the formation of the poverty campaign and where to put the responsibility to what we're going to do on the farm bill uh, to what we do on the education uh, to what we do on the medical care by taking extra uh, money in by going so far as we've gone in education, and that those things have been argued out. And sometimes uh, you felt we're going too fast, too far, and sometimes I felt we're not going far enough, or vice versa. And that we have had to debate them and, and get consensus. And we've done it on our monetary policy, and we've done it on all of these things, that uh, we get different viewpoints from time to time on Mansfield and Dirksen, Fulbright, all of them on foreign policy, and we consider every one of them. 
conscientiously and then decided that we haven't gone as far as uh, Jerry Ford didn't think we ought to bomb it. We've gone farther than Mansfield thinks we ought to. So we've tried to honestly do what we think is right. And I think I'd bring Sidey in to see us. He's an awfully strong Kennedy man. And he's actuated by Bobby. And you can see the crowd that's doing this. Bobby's going to Latin America now. And he's got Gil Patrick working for him. And you saw the Gil Patrick story in time this morning. New York Times. That's not accidental. So then. Yeah. Well, I think there's a lot can be done with just more candidness. I think that's our basic problem. As I have mentioned to you before, our images do result primarily to to their interpretation of our being overly secretive. I just think more candid, sincere discussion. And I just think that you ought to say that uh, on Jack's speech that you know that it's amusing to some of them that a man should have uh, this uh, affection for another man, but that you believe that if they will look at anyone who has uh, been with me 25 years, whether it begins with Juanita, whether it begins with uh, uh, John Conley, or whether it begins with Walter Jenkins, or whether it begins with Bill White, or whether it begins with Gould Lincoln, who wrote the first story here about me, that you'll find that all of them have this feeling, and that you have it. And that, uh, uh, as far as this business of saying somebody's a messenger boy, uh, you just never have heard that. And that uh, you have uh, always given your honest opinion. And a good many times you've been vetoed. But you expect that uh, a careful analysis would be that at 30 years old, you have made more big decisions that have been approved by the president than would have been approved if you'd been working for uh, AT&T. Which is true. I don't think there's any question. I think it's a whole legislative program, 95% of it uh, that are approved. And I would imagine AT&T uh, president and stockholders would have held you back on a good many things that suggested. And one of them you settled yesterday. <laughs> and another one's the Howard University speech. And a good many things of this type. Now, this beautification, the way we went for it. And uh, uh, I think that I would say that to him. I just say now, uh, I know it, I'm not supposed to be a Sorensen, but here Sorensen went much stronger than Jack did. He said that Kennedy was Christ, compared him to Christ. But uh, uh, the feeling was that uh, they had a better feeling for Kennedy than they do. Then they've never liked Jack because they feel Jack is a, uh, a personal yes, a servant of mine, and he is wonderful for me. He is not uh, 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 irritating to me. He's pleasant. He's soft. I think you're good for me. I think Buzz is good for me. I think Harry is awfully good for me. Uh, I don't have men that clash with me. Marvin. And Marvin just says every day, Mr. President, I don't think we're going to do this. But he does it in a nice, kind way. That's very true of Marvin. And they don't know that. And they've got to see that. And I just say the most obstinate man in government is Bu Horace Busby. You can't move him an inch. But he's not a fellow that, uh, that shouts and gets in a big fight. And he writes his memo, and the boss looks and calls him up and says, You're right. I do a little of that. I'll see you for a while. Bill, appointment, Bill.